Hello and welcome back to a new devlog. When I started the rewrite I knew that there would be three challenges to overcome. If I even fail one of these challenges then the rewrite is basically over. The first challenge is creating a client that can interface with the Java version using the network and as you can see I already did that a while ago and actually I did this before even announcing this project to anyone and yeah that's working pretty good it wasn't too hard but it has made a lot of things easier for example when I was making the 3d voxel models and also when I was making the procedurally generated textures I wouldn't have been able to do this without this interface to the java version because I cannot place blocks in here and <laughs> wouldn't have been able to place my test blocks which you can see here I was able to place all of these blocks with the java version without this it would have been a huge pain to do because I had to I would have had to implement all of this basically in the code hard coding all the chunks and yeah this important milestone was achieved very early on the second milestone is text rendering in the java version it was kind of complicated despite java having support for text rendering i used the java standard library functions to render the text and it was a big mess and really annoying to work with and you may have noticed that this version doesn't display any text not even the player names so yeah this is a big challenge that is <laughs> still left to do and text rendering is obviously important I don't think I have to tell you that <laughs> and the third big challenge would be the GUI system as you can see there's also no menus yet nothing and that's also pretty important and it is a big challenge for me because zig doesn't have object orientation or inheritance so it would mean that i would need to make v tables and all of this stuff myself and it might be a bit annoying and also i would like to use the rewrite as an opportunity to basically rewrite parts of the GUI system because I'm not too happy with the current version. It's a bit messy at the moment and sometimes a bit annoying to use, especially when it comes to automatically trying to lay out things that is that always ends up in a huge mess in the Java version and comes with a ton of bugs as well and several UI related bugs. So yeah, today I want to show you how I did text rendering, which to my surprise wasn't as hard as I expected. So when you search for text rendering you will probably come across the old technique, just using a bitmap, putting all of it into a texture and just rendering things from the bitmap that's a super easy approach but it also cannot do anything it's really annoying to get any further than maybe the ascii characters and i would like to have unicode font rendering that would be pretty cool to have and the next thing you see in that regard is free type and FreeType seems to be the go-to library for rendering text. And here I already found my first problem. FreeType is a C library and it can be a bit annoying to link C libraries with the ZIG because essentially I have to go through all the CMake files and try to figure out how things 
were done in CMake and then translate this CMake stuff into the ZIG build system. And I didn't really want to do that. I was already close to giving up, but then I found this free type bindings for ZIG. Uh, special thanks to SlimSack for making this. It was really easy to install, I just had to clone it into my repository and add a couple of things to the build file. And it also comes with half bars, which will be important later. So with all that I could start rendering some text and you can see it's working pretty well. well. There's a lot of Unicode characters. I've used a Unicode pixel art font, basically the Unicode version of the font that is used in the Java version. And yeah, it's rendering a bunch of characters, Greek characters, math characters. The only problem here is these vector arrays are uh, these vector arrows are actually combining characters, so I would want the vector arrow to sit on top of the A. For example, to show you this in an actual text editor, here is how it should look. And it should not look like this. So yeah, I thought maybe it's not that important, I don't really want to bother with it. So I kept it like that for the moment. Instead I put my focus back to coloring text and some formatting stuff, which is kind of the main reason why I'm doing all of this manually, because most text rendering libraries probably don't have support for this. And I think this is pretty cool, so... Yeah, this is the thing I focus on. And after I got all of this done, I got back to thinking about how I could make these combining characters. And when you search for this, you may come across half bars, which is a text shaping library. Essentially, it you give it a bunch of text and it tells you where to draw the glyphs. And the glyphs are still generated by FreeType. FreeType is only rendering the text from a font. So essentially I give FreeType a Unicode code point and it gives me back a bitmap of that glyph basically. And half pass takes a bunch of bunch of text and converts into into position glyphs that I can then render using the bitmaps that I got from FreeType. It's honestly a bit complicated because why can't these be like a single library? <laughs> so yeah, I did that and Well, <laughs> this is a bit of a problem. Apparently Halfpass uses some kind of fixed point format, so I had to divide everything by 4. And also the glyphs are wrong. Apparently it doesn't give me... Or oh, well, Halfpass gives me a code point as a result. But it's not the Unicode code point. Instead, it's the glyph index that I can use for free type. So it was a bit weird to figure that out. And here we go. After figuring that out, you can see I got my vector arrows finally working. <laughs> and the only problem that would be left is now going back to the formatting hints. And here also with some more combining characters. 
So half pass makes it a bit harder to implement these formatting hints because I don't know anymore which glyph corresponds to what index in my text array. And if we take a look at what I get from half bus, essentially I get a, some glyph positionings which I can use to position my glyphs and which also tell me when I should step to the next character basically. And I also get this glyph info which consists of the code point which is the index into free type, some mask with some values that I don't care about, this cluster index which seems to be unique for each cluster. A cluster is for example this A with all the vector arrays, that's one cluster. And lastly I also, there's also these variables which seem to be internal variables and I have no idea what they do. And yeah, I don't really know how to go from there because none of these tell me where in the text I am. And also half pass may make multiple glyphs from a single character so I cannot use the index in the glyph infos array as as the index into my original text because they have different lengths. So I looked around the half fast documentation which I didn't really know what to look for. But in the cluster section I finally found something. Apparently you can use the cluster index as an index into the text. And you can do stuff like coloring. So after figuring that out, it was relatively easy to implement the text. And as you can see, I went a bit further and tried to approximate the actual index rather than only using the cluster index. And using this, I am able to give different colors to glyphs inside the same cluster. And as you can see it's working quite well. There is just one thing missing and that's underlining and I also did that. In the Java version I had overlining as the second parameter but here I just decided to use to strike through instead because it's more useful I think. And yeah, as you can see that also works pretty well. And after that, on actually the 1st of January at 3 a.m. my neighbors kept me awake with loud music so I decided to do some more programming and I actually implemented line wrapping. So if I write something and it's too long, it just wraps over into the next line. And I also made a little dynamic example for this, which is this thing here. Basically it takes my mouse position and depending on my mouse position it uh, wraps the text so it, it is as wide as my mouse. And yeah, as you can see that works quite well. Also, the text is not important, um, there's no, definitely no secrets in there. Uh, yeah. That's it for the text rendering. It, it is working alright and... One more interesting thing to note here. The line wrapping isn't actually implemented in the Java version. I just never got around to doing it and it's pretty cool that this problem is also solved now. Anyways, <laughs> the next challenge awaits me and that is the GUI system. I'm not a huge fan of writing GUI systems so <laughs> I hope this goes well. 
I might have a solution for this, but I cannot promise anything. And it would be really cool to have this problem out of the way. I would like to progress to the server side soon, or as soon as possible. And hopefully I can get some terrain generation work done. I'm really eager to get back to some terrain generation. I have a bunch of ideas and there's also still this random number generator that I would like to implement. So yeah, I've got a lot of plans there. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Uh, I think I made some good progress here on the rewrite. This is an important milestone to get. And yeah, hopefully once the GUI system is done, there will be a lot of progress. There is a ton of code that is related to the GUI system and once that's done, it's, the rewrite is basically almost done on the client side. There's only a few smaller rendering things missing and the music, but these shouldn't be too hard. Anyways, that's it for today. Goodbye.